Hey folks, how's it going? I'm Josh. We'll be checking out the Ricky Gervais Show Season 2, Episode 2. Really enjoyed Episode 1 of Season 2, so everything's kind of starting off with, a, I guess, a bang is the best way to say it. Thank you guys so much for sticking through the entire Season 1 with me. Um, I look forward to you guys sticking around through Season 2, as well as with Idiot Abroad. All right, guys, please continue to leave comments and recommendations below. All our videos are based off of your comments and recommendations, and if you are subscribed, we check those out first. So let's jump into it. Stink. Is that all right? Hello and welcome to the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed buffoon that is Carl Pilkington. All right. Now, Carl, I know you're fascinated by the concept of the doppelganger, of seeing someone who looks exactly like you. Yeah. Jake has emailed in. He says, Carl, if you could spend a day with an exact replica of you... OK, so somehow they've cloned you, Carl, and they've got, you've got him for one day. What would you do with this? What would you, what would you make him do? What, would you, uh, what conversation would you have with him? What would you do? Is there anything you could... You know, how would you utilise him for one day? Well, they'd both say, I'm not bothered, and that would be the end of conversation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what would do me head in is... Does he, does he think the same way, look the same way? Exactly dresses? the same. Yeah. How would I know which one I was? <laughs> <laughs> because you'd be you. That's amazing. No, I know. I know that seems I know. incredible. No, because that is the most stupid thing <laughs> ever said by a human being. Can we get the Guinness Book of Records on this? <laughs> Has anyone anywhere in the world said anything more stupid than "How would I know which one was me?" But think about it. This other person's going. All right, oh, thanks Jesus. for uh, meeting up and that. And I go, hang on a minute. No, you you came to me. And then Suzanne would come home and she wouldn't know the difference. And then suddenly you'd start doubting yourself. And you'd go, should I be leaving? Or, so how do I know if I am that real one, if he knows what I know? But you know who you are because you're yeah, but, experiencing it. But he'd it. be saying that because he'd say, yeah, it is a bit weird. But you know the you truth, know? you idiot. Because how you would I know which one I was? But if he is an exact replica, how would you know? That's that's a typical thing in like a sci-fi story. It's like that. there's a clone. You don't really know if you're really the original. You just don't know. For sure. So like... Um. Yeah, I get what he's saying. I definitely get what he's saying. Man, they they like to just keep talking though. I think they just enjoy it. But yeah, I get what he's saying. So anyway, but bear in mind, you what could would pass, you do? You could pass him off as yourself. What would you do? Would you play tricks? Would you uh, you know, you could what? be in two places at once. Would you do stings? Would you do scams? No, because it would only end up getting me into trouble, won't it? Because people won't believe that there's another one like me. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, everyone would be saying that when they get caught robbing. They go, oh, it wasn't me, it was my doppelganger. <laughs> it can only... I wouldn't want it, to be honest. It's a, it, Again, it's a bit of a headache, isn't it? Because he could be going off going mental, causing all sorts of trouble, and you're going, well, you pack it in. <laughs> and he's going, what? What are you on about? <laughs> but then that wouldn't happen, would it? Because he's being me, so he'd be sat wherever I am anyway. Because hmm. he'd want to do what I want to do. So, pointless. But I still wouldn't want it. <laughs> It's unbelievable. That was a conversation with himself. That yeah. was amazing. <laughs> that, was like, that was like experiencing what it would have been like there. Oh, yeah. He was we having a discussion could, with himself. We could have left in yeah. that time and come back, and he'd be arguing still. What does this mean? Does this mean... <laughs> <laughs> does this mean, though, that I could just sit at home and not do anything and just send me out on... Yes. And any, any, when, he, when he's seen something happen, I'm seeing it. No, 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 no. no, no. You're separate people. You're separate people. But then yeah. he's not a doppelganger, then, Well, is he? you're identical twins, then. You found out identical twins, and he's got the, exactly the same input as you. I mean, it's not a real question, is it? It's just a little... Again... But I said to you the other week about twins and that, how it's, I, I wouldn't like to have a twin. It's, a, it's all right when you're a kid, but unless you're a Siamese twin, even they don't even look alike, do they? They're just stuck together. You don't go, oh, don't they look like each other? They have different haircuts. They don't. They don't carry that thing on, do they? That normal twins do. Like normal <laughs> twins, the mums say have the same haircut, wear the same shirt. Siamese twins never look the same. They just <laughs> got their arms stuck together. <laughs> Again, it's a dialogue in his own head. It's unbelievable. <laughs> oh, worse. Okay, Carl. This is a a, a logical conundrum. Um, to a certain extent, there's a little bit of lateral thinking because, uh, but there is only one right answer. Um, now, the pressure here isn't to get this right. The pressure is 
when I've told you the answer to then understand it. Because I've still, when I've explained this to people, I've laid out for them, they still can't quite get the concept. Um, okay, so there's two doors, Carl. Yeah. One leads to heaven, right. one leads to hell. Yeah. Okay, they're identical. You can't tell them apart. Okay, 50 50. Right. Obviously, you want to go to heaven, I assume. Right, yeah. there's two guards, identical guards, guarding each door. Okay? Right. The one guarding hell always tells a lie. The one guarding heaven always tells the truth. You have to ask one question to find out which, which is which and then go through the door you want. What question do you ask? I've only got one. Yeah. And what, one to, to both? No, one to either of them. You don't know which one's which, though. So what question do you ask? Why can't I ask, like, both of them one? Because it's because not the, the rules. Because the rules are you can only ask one. There aren't actually two doors labelled heaven and hell, Carl. That's this a leap of imagination here. And I've, I've, I've definitely got to, answer, I've got to ask them a question. I can't just sort of have a feel of the door to see <laughs> if there's any heat or anything. <laughs> <laughs> They're identical. You stand a few yards away. You cannot tell from the outside of these doors which is which. What question do you ask? <laughs> I can't look through the keyhole or anything. There's no keyhole. Anyway near them. Um, Let's imagine there's a small rope that prevents you from getting anywhere near, rather like outside a nightclub. Yeah. So, they stood there. Yeah. They both look the same, they're both smiling. Yeah. But one of them's not really smiling, really. He's trying to make me make a mistake, isn't he? Well, he's just going to lie when you ask him a question, if you ask him. So what's the point in asking a question? Do I know one of them's going to lie? Yeah. But would they be neighbours like this? Would they be that close? <laughs> Why? <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure if these two guys get up. Oh, well, I'll tell you the answer. No, 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 I want to see if he can get it. He's almost there. Uh, oh, no, he's no. not almost there. What am I thinking? So, no, hang on. Right, so you go up and you yeah. go... Um, you right, go... hang on. Well, look, let's, let's, imagine that, let's imagine Ricky and I are those two guys. OK? Right? But we have to... Um, uh, uh, well, well me, and, me and Steve would decide which doors we're guarding, OK? Right. Uh, I'm... Uh... Look away, Carl. OK, right, then. so we've decided, OK, one of us is guarding hell and one of us is guarding heaven. Which question are you going to ask and who are you going to ask it to? Right, um, I'll just say to you, Steve, I'll go, uh, uh got some, uh, got some post for God here. <laughs> That's not a question. That's a statement. Right, you've got some posts for God here. Well, that's not a question. Yeah, but maybe All the right, question's right. coming. I got, you've got some posts for God here, yeah? Uh, and it needs to be signed. It's, it's not a, a question. Still not a question. No, let so him finish me. So, is God in because I need him to sign for this post? Is he in? Well, I can answer that as well if you want. Go on. Y he's, yeah, he's in. He's behind my door. Do you want to answer it? Well, yes. Do you, want to, do you want to get him? Just, uh Well, no, you've only got one question. So, you are, you're asking Steve, is God in? What's the answer? Yes. Ask me. Yes. <laughs> Look, lads, I'm just trying to do a job here. Um, <laughs> what am I going to do with this? <laughs> well, give it to me and I'll give it to God because he's behind my door. Steve? Yeah, give it to me and I'll take it into God because he's behind my door. You're an idiot. <laughs> Let me tell you the answer. I'm guarding hell, by the way. I'm the devil. <laughs> Steve's God, OK? So you asked me what, what Steve would say if you asked him what door he was guarding. And I'm going to lie. I know he'd say heaven, because he'd tell the truth, but I'm lying, so I'd say he'd say hell. So the, the, uh, the question is, if I was to ask the other one what door he was guarding, what would he say? And whatever the person answers is the door they're guarding. Steve, what door are you, are you looking after? Well, heaven. Yeah. Why should I believe you? Because you don't know. No, that doesn't work. Because you asked me the same and I'd say heaven as well. Right, so who do we believe? This is where you use your gut feeling, though, isn't it? This is what <laughs> life's... <laughs> well, as opposed to the pure logic that Ricky's just used. I just think, cos there's a lot of questions in life where you don't know the answer and you go, do you know what? I don't like the look of him. <laughs> so... They're I, identical. Yeah, but they're still identical twins. You always get a little snidey one. <laughs> I love how Carl need he he needs a clear picture painting. Like no, like why would they be doing that? This part makes no sense. This has like it's just. <laughs> oh, I, lo 
I just love Carl. He's funny, man. Oh, chimpanzee, that he's raining down. <laughs> Uh, that's the jingle there for Carl's diary. Uh, here we are. Spoke to Ricky and his friend Glyn about art. I just don't get it. Ricky had some odd pictures on his walls. I don't have any pictures up in my flat because of the mirrored wall. <laughs> but I can't say I'm bothered. The mirrored wall, we should just explain what that is. When you moved into your flat, there was an enormous mirror on one wall. Was that right? We just got this flat and, uh, you know, it's not a big flat. So I think the people who had it before us, he was a gay fella, right? Which was a bit like, oh, so you've been doing with that mirror and that. But what? That, that, <laughs> what? No, just you so, know. Just, what? What? Well, what has he been doing with the mirror? What what just the, what, 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 no, what? it's just because they're quite sort of experimental in it, aren't they? And I don't know. What do you mean? What do they do? Well, I wouldn't know anything about it, but go on. No, what do you want? What? No, I don't. Experimental what do in what way? What do you mean experimental? I just mean, you know, they'd be doing stuff. <laughs> what? Whatever, whatever they do. Chemistry. What? They have a chemistry set out. They'd be doing experiments. What? No, just doing what? Singing I Am What I Am and just checking out their no, the dance moves. I'm not having a go at anyone, but what? I'm just saying, like, they're doing what they're doing. Uh, which Carl, you're not having a phone as well, yeah? You're not... No, I'm not. I'm not. Well, this is what, why... Well, but, what, why are you worried about what a little gay fella was doing in your flat before you got it in the front of a mirror? I wasn't worried about it. Why I mean, are you thinking about what he's doing? Why are you fantasising what a little gay fella was doing in front of your mirror in your... I'm not, I'm not bothered. I'm just telling you what, why <laughs> it was a bit odd that he had a mirror in there, right? But forget the, the history. But you've got a mirror in there now, haven't you? No, because what I did was... I tried, I was going to take it down, and I thought, oh, it's a bit dangerous. This, yeah. You know, it could crack and because it's the size of the whole wall, isn't it? It, it, it took up a whole wall, right. right? So like when he's moving about everywhere, he's got a good view of it and that. But he's got this full wall of mirror, and I thought I can't set that down. <laughs> and uh, I thought, what, what can I do? So I've just put wallpaper on it. Brilliant. And it looks all right. You you wouldn't know what have you? But it means that I can't put any pictures up. That's that's all. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Because I've got a nail in it. And what don't you understand about art? What about art don't you understand? The concept? Specifics? No, so I, I, that's, that's like when we, when we were in London having a shop around at Christmas and there was that picture of fruit for 700 quid. It's like, <laughs> well, just get some fruit. You know what I mean? You can get some real fruit for three quid. Yeah. I understand that, but don't invent cameras then, one or the other. Do you know what I mean? That's <laughs> what annoys me. Someone invents something and then they go, we've got to invent something else. Like the abstract thing. Why has someone gone... Oh, I can't have paintings anymore because... What do you think of Dali? Going, melting clocks and stuff, no? I mean, the first one was all right when he did the first clock, but then all the time he's just like, oh, I'll draw something and it's got a melting clock on it. Mm. I'll do a sheep, put, put one of them on it. Put, have put you seen his lobster telephone? That annoys me. Why? Because he, I think what annoyed me more with that is when he heard about how it happened, um, he had some artist mate round, mm. right? And um, I don't know what happened. Uh, they, oh, were okay. they were eating. That's a hell of an anecdote. No, no, but they were eating. They were eating some yeah. food and what have you. Yeah. Lobsters. And uh, yeah, they, they were eating lobster. Oh, right. And uh, that's Andy. I don't know the other artist, whoever it was. Sort of phone. Started saying, "Oh, you and your clocks and all that." Right. Brilliant. And, um, they this started, didn't happen. They yeah. started arguing. <laughs> yeah. And he chucked some of the lobster. Bollocks. And it <laughs> the phone stopped his mate's head. Went on the phone and they both looked at each other like, "Are you thinking what I'm thinking?" And they they, they brought out that phone as a bit of art. <laughs> Things like that annoy me didn't because happen. it was then just messing about. That didn't happen. Just <laughs> telling you what I know. I saw his his work. Each to their own. If that's what he's doing, I'm just saying I'm not putting my stamp of approval on it. Art should be there to tell a story, not just to have a splash of colour. We know. Well, Suzanne like, like some art. Just like uh, it's a, Suzanne's not allowed to watch telly unless it's a favourite thing. Otherwise, she's got to talk to me about stuff. There's no art. There's no point. Just wallpaper. I'm just saying we've got three three windows we can look out of. Right. Right. Stop looking at the walls. Look out the window. <laughs> My man phoned and said that my Auntie Nora, <laughs> uh, classic Auntie Nora, wanted me to look on the internet to find out what the weather will be like in Spain at the end of November. I don't know where she gets her money from. Two months ago, she was asking me, Dad, how much it would be to get her back garden astroturfed because she's sick and tired of the grass getting out of her What does she want to do? Start a football team? <laughs> what does she want to back garden astroturf? She likes the sort of green look, but she doesn't like the headache that comes with it, so she's just looking into getting that false grass put in there. 
Brilliant. Don't know how much it is. But... Went round to Ricky's and had some chicken curry that Ricky's girlfriend Jane had made. Ricky and Jane were going on holiday for a few days and had arranged for Glyn to come in and make sure the cat was OK while they were away. I'm sick of that cat. I was surprised that they hadn't paid for the little shit to go away with them on first class. <laughs> Well, I'm getting a bit vitriolic in the uh, why diary. He, and why doesn't he like the fact that I've got a cat and I, I love the cat? Why? Why? It's why... just everything in that house that you've got gets sort of special treatment, and it's a cat. And it what do you mean you get me. special treatment? You, sometimes we put I, food down for it, and yeah. sometimes it gets uh, uh, on our lap and we stroke it. You don't what, just stroke it. We're you not massage sending it. it. You massage its back. You go, no, are you stressed out? Well, no, 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 it's out. <laughs> no, no, I'm not saying you stressed out. At no point did I say you stressed out. You said, what the fuck are you doing for? Is it stressed out or something? I, 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 I like uh, touching my cat. To be honest with you, I don't like Ricky's cat. Oh, it, I can't believe because it! Because every time I go around there, it comes straight from the goonies. <laughs> yeah, it's just like the lizard thing you've got. It's, kind of, it's just sat there, you've bought it a big box, right, to be in. Right, <laughs> well, it's a salamander, right. so it's an amphibian. Yeah. It's not a box, it's a big vivarium. Yeah, but what I'm saying and is... As it, and, and, and if you're going to criticise someone for just sitting there, uh, having a round head and doing nothing with its life, uh, people who live in glass houses, no, we've done this one. Do you, know, do you know what gets me, though, right, Steve? When I was there, I was looking at it, and I thought, is it dead? Right, because he's just sat there. Like, and then it was thinking exactly the same fucking <laughs> thing. sat there, not moving, right? And then on the top of the box is, like, a box full of crickets and stuff. <laughs> That's... it. It's, it's it's food, yeah. right? But they were more active than the thing that it was going to feed. <laughs> Get rid of the lizards. Keep them in there. More entertaining. <laughs> Don't understand it. A few months back, a girl who was on the kid showed me one of them scans of the kid oh, that was God, in her. No. That's science gone mad, innit? I couldn't think of anything nice to say as it looked like a frog. <laughs> Do you know why we've got to that point? What? Why? Be honest. When you guys see those things, no I, I guess because I'm not a woman, I never go, oh, I'm like, I can barely see it. It just looks like fuzz to me. And the 3D ones are creepy. So, yeah, I get I get what he's saying. Why have we got to see something that, that young? Why? Because people can keep an eye on the progress of the baby in the womb. Yeah, but why are they printing it out and stuff? That's some, Surely that's for a doctor to see. Well, that's yeah. just an added bonus for people who are interested in but such things. Well, that's like saying, why do you take pictures... Of anything? No, no but what what I mean is, why? At what point are we going to stop? Are we going to start sort of X-raying the fella's testicles and saying, "Well, there it is at a really young age." <laughs> but where, where where are we going to stop? It's because, it's just porches for porches, isn't it? Some people like to have a record of their baby in the womb. They That's like right. to show the baby. They're excited they about it. They All sit right, down then. and they they show the friends the the slideshow. There That's the birth. Oh, that's the conception. Oh, look, Ron's going a bit mad there, isn't he? But why do I need to see this? This is what I'm saying. It was an awkward situation because she was happy with it. I was like, oh, God. You know what I mean? It was an odd-looking thing. I couldn't say, oh, it looks like you, because that would be a diss. <laughs> well, Rick, you're not the only one who's been away. I know you've been off working, but I, uh, long last, have taken a bit of leisure time. Go on. And uh, <laughs> you've probably heard of the Rio de Janeiro Carnival. Only one of the uh, the hottest uh, you know events in the world oh, calendar. Yeah. <laughs> imagine me down there. Oh, Rio! God. You can imagine. Did not know oh, what hit it. Oh God! Oh my! Imagine, were you like uh, Paul the Party Animal Park? He would not have been able to keep up if he was with me. God! What did you do? Oh, what did you get up to? Well, let me tell you right now. Um, day one, I almost drowned. Day two, I got a foot infection and spent the day in the hospital. Oh. And the rest of the time, I had diarrhoea. <laughs> So that's uh, that's the, that was a hell of a that was a hell of a time. Carnival. Yeah. I thought he said he loved it. When when we watched the Idiot Abroad, I thought I thought Steve said he like loved Rio or, or he probably said he would love it. But I thought he said no. I thought he said he had a good time because it was like so much culture or something like that. I could be wrong, but I think I remember him saying that. Yeah. Yeah. I did. Uh, I was able to watch some of the carnival on TV, oh, and right. it looked brilliant. It looked did amazing. It? Um, I didn't actually. I, it was difficult to make out because the TV wasn't actually in my room. <laughs> Because um, in an effort to save money, I wasn't staying in a hotel. I was staying with a bunch of other people in some kind of like someone's flat that they let out, and uh, so I had to look. I had to watch the TV like from my window, watching a neighbour's TV. 
And of course, when they change the channel, you know, often during the juicy bits, I couldn't see anything. And um, so, but they look really good. I'm bunged up at the moment just so I can get through the show. But I've just been on a 12 hour flight, and it is terrifying being on a flight when you know that any moment you could go. Because you know how the problem is sometimes the toilet's free, and sometimes in you've got to queue up. And the worst bit is that that sort of half an hour just before you land when they say the toilets are out of bounds now. <laughs> I tell you, I went twice before that in quick succession. The woman sat next to the toilet. She was, she didn't know what was going on, the noises and stuff in there. And I was, because I was really oh. panicky. Oh, Christ. And um, and so, of course, then on the whole flight, uh, as we're landing, I'm just, I'm really petrified because I'm thinking this could. I, mean, I packed a pair of underpants and jeans in the in the bag in the hold all. Just in case it all went, oh, and I was no. really because I hate flying anyway, and I hate landing because it's the most terrifying moment of the journey. Then it really was rumbling, and I was thinking, I got to get out of here. Of course, you know, you know when you're in a hurry, everything suddenly everything makes you angry. The little old lady in front of me who's just hobbling along off the gangplank. Yeah. Go yeah. You're just really annoying. <laughs> with, your, with, your, with your bad hips and yeah, your bad and legs. Yeah, and your Zimmer frame. I know you've been through a war, but get out of my way. <laughs> yeah. And just anyone who could have even passes you, oh, you just, oh. And uh, so I, yeah, I managed to get there just in time, got into the time, and it all went off. Man alive, it was, it was grim. But th- that, was, that was not anything compared with the first couple of days, because the first day I was... I went for a walk. In between the beach is famous for just the beautiful, beautiful people that gather there. There's so many beautiful women in Rio, it made me angry. I was angry that these women were so attractive and that, you know, none of them were even looking at me. So, but anyway, I'm on the beach, because I, I was shopping, and I needed a wee, right? And we went for a quick, impromptu swim, and I thought, oh, we in the, in the sea. Just think of him! On this beach, right? We're diarrhea! Well, I'm wearing great big long shorts because I'm not going to try and compete with these boys because they and are. And you are, could I say this, the whitest man yeah. I've ever met in my life. Yeah. I mean, with his shirt off, you can see his heart like a newborn fish. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, this is the thing. As I went into the sea to have a wee, oh, there was a discussion about this. As I went into the sea to have a wee <laughs> in a well, litter tray. See, there was a discussion about this because I'm very much of the opinion that you should take your trunks down. And some people, uh, some of my friends are saying, just do it in your trunks and let's see the sea just wash it away. What a hell of a carnival. Well, <laughs> and I think that's I'm against that. I've always been against that. Against that in swimming pools, everything, you know. So I so I no, to... I'm against pissing in swimming pools, full stop. It doesn't matter whether you do get in, take your trunks down or let don't piss but in, what the about in the pool. sea. Yeah, well fine, yeah. Fine, okay. Right, so, fish, fish do it. So. so anyway, so I'm in the sea trying to trying to urinate and I so I kneeled because I'm obviously very tall, so it's tricky to get deep enough for the water to, to mask what you're up to. So I tried to kneel down in the water, right? And, and I got the, I got John Thomas out, but then the water swept out again and just left me on the beach. <laughs> so, but luckily my, my back was to it, everyone's no one saw. So um, so I so I, I can't walked... think of a funnier sight than Steve Merchant on his knees with his little John Thomas out. I don't know how big it is. I've never seen it. But me, I imagine it's in proportion to the rest of it. I no. wish. Um, <laughs> this all I'll say is I've been a little shortchanged. I but, wish. Um, so, I, so then I got up and I waded a bit deeper in, right? And uh, now I was sort of, I was, I was trying, I got it out. But what I didn't realise is that the waves just off the beach are really just uncontrollable. You never know what's going to happen. So suddenly I see this giant wave coming towards me, crashing towards me, and I got the cock out and everything, and it grabs this wave, comes over me, and lifts me up, flips me up in the water, right? And I'm floundering around, I can't see anything, because of course I had to take my glasses off <laughs> to go in the sea. Because I, oh, I didn't want to lose them. Oh, God. So, so, I, so I floundering around, and I'm wa- genuinely getting scared, because I, as I try to get into shore, the wave just pulls me back again. So I'm waving to my friends on the beach. But what With I everything. Well, what I don't realise is that because I'm, wearing my, well, cause I'm not wearing my glasses, I don't realise that I've been dragged along the beach some way, and I'm not actually waving <laughs> to my friends. So there's, like, a bunch of these beautiful women on Ipanema Beach watching a pasty white man waving with his cock out. <laughs> and, and, and what annoyed me was my friends were laughing. And that Steve, really, really angered me. if I'd have been there, I would have burst. But why would you have come running, would you have come running in and help me? Oh, I couldn't have saved you with your glasses off in your belt. <laughs> well, if, I, if I ever save you, I want you to be fully dressed with your glasses on. So you'd have just let me go. You'd have, that would have been what you'd said to my parents. <laughs> He had his knob out and his glasses off. There was no way I was going to... I can't see the funniest sight. Oh. (laughs) Oh, that's messed up, man. Jesus Christ. Well, at least I've never had an experience like that. Where, um... Well, I've had an experience where I've almost drowned, but not with my freaking, like, you know, trunks off. But I have almost drowned before. 
I didn't understand why the kids got to play in the other pool, like the deep side of the pool. I didn't know what it's called, the deep end. They just call it the kid, the um, the adult end and the kid end. And um, I this was in Gary, and it was at um, I remember I was walking there, and it was a slope. I went down the slope, and that's it. I, I had the jump. I was underwater jumping like I was in space, trying to make my way back up the slope that takes you all the way to like the the deep end, which I think was like ten or twelve feet. And I remember I was like maybe eight or nine, but I'm like jumping jumping over and over again to make it and i would come out of the water and wave and then just go back down i did that over and over time finally the other, other side and um i remember lifeguard was just like reading a paper so yeah i learned my lesson now like there's a don't take risk when i was a kid like, and i learned a lesson early like, don't take risk because the adults probably won't save you because like the, the guy wasn't paying attention you assume like you see the lifeguard you're like oh i'm good to, i'm good to go i can take some risk no because sometimes they're just not paying attention, and he wasn't paying attention. So, luckily, I jumped back that way and freaking survived. But nothing scarier to me than um, almost drowning. Um, I well, I'll suffer like probably being in a fire, but I haven't been in like a fire. So, but that was terrifying. Almost drowning. I can't um, like imagine like being out in the ocean, a wave dragging you back out. I I was knocked about a few times at the what do you call? the deep river water park they have that wave system and i got i was getting knocked around with the wave because i went too far ahead and i held onto the edge my buddy was panicking jeff who was on here he elbowed me in the nose my nose is freaking pooling blood because like he had got too far into we we're holding on to the edge oh man he elbowed the crap out of me my nose is bleeding for it felt like forever but, but yeah i guess most of my like i've had bad experiences with water it's a pretty bad experience when you almost drown though that stinks and same thing with, like, friends. Like you said, when you just try to run out there and help them. I think most friends just kind of laugh at the other friends make fun of them. I, if I had a towel or something, yeah, I'd, try to, I'd help my boy out. I'm not going to just let him freaking stand up with his junk out. But, yeah, it'd probably be funny first. All my friends laughed at me when I slipped on ice in front of the um the mall over here. Climbing out of the car, slip, boom. But everybody started laughing. Nobody helped me up. While I was trying to slip, get back up again, I slipped and fell again. Yeah. So, I don't know. We're still friends this day. Still cool, loyal friends. So sometimes you gotta pick, poke fun of your friends. I enjoy. It's funny. Uh, that was a good story. Him about the drawing thing, but I still like uh, like the questions they ask Carl, and Carl needs so much detail. I love that. Like, like why would they be doing that? Like, why would they be next to each other? Like, why do you uh, why do I have to like look at your uh, what do you call it? baby picture or what have you? Um, which I get it. People are really, really excited, and they'll show you stuff that because they they want somebody to kind of share their joy with them. So I get that part. But when I see it, I like I'm like I just don't. It just looks like a like a, a bean with some dots. It looks all grainy. A buddy of mine um who got pregnant, she had uh she was pregnant with her daughter. She had like one of those 3D ultrasounds. Like dude, that's creepy. It's kind of like an alien thing. It's like, yeah, it was, it was it was really weird to me. So yeah, I guess when I have a kid, if I ever have a kid, I really don't want want children. But if I ever did have a kid. Um, I guess I'd be just as excited and be showing everybody the ultrasound too, even though I can't really tell what what's going on in the pictures. So, yeah, I enjoyed this. This is funny. Um, season two is it's, it's kind of just starting off with like with the bang. It's good, really funny um stuff. I like the little like them putting car in these situations where they ask like these um these questions and like the whole heaven hell question and stuff like that. I, I like that. I like the little format. I'm still gonna keep saying uh, I'm 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 gonna miss monkey news. I enjoy monkey news. But uh, the diary is a good a good fill in. So, all right, guys, that's all for this one. Hopefully, you guys are happy, safe, and healthy. And um, that's it. I'll see you in the next one later.